Hey guys, Chetan here from Phone Radar, and today we are going to do the review of the HTC Desire A20. This is a phablet from HTC that comes not into the flagship range and again not into the budget range. Even the flagship devices are almost every OEM's focus, but nobody takes more pride into their mid-range smartphones. While HTC is one of those which actually takes uh, most of the things into consideration. And one of the interesting things about this is its price as well as the specifications what are given in this. Now we are going to take a look inside what might be the HTC's most powerful uh, mid-range smartphone. So first talk about the uh, design of uh, the Desire 820. The Desire 820 comes with a design that is again uh, something that uh, takes the inspiration from the earlier HTC devices and 1M8 is one of those uh, smartphones which has been uh, lauded by most of the tech publications as one of the best designs. So. Uh, HTC did take a lot of uh, inspiration from that but this one comes with the, the polycarbonate body which is not that great and uh, it is a unibody design again whether it's a plastic or metal HTC has proven to build a quality phone over uh, the time and this still looks pretty good although the polycarbonate design and uh, it should it does feel uh, a slippery solid because there's no so there's nothing that would uh, let this device stay in your hand and my favorite part about this design is its accent colors because although it's a flat color there are uh, edges and uh, around the camera there are circular uh, shapes with the white color which actually uh, makes the uh, makes the device uh, design stand out and everything is usually placed with the 3.5 headset jack on the top the micro usb port in the bottom and uh, there's a mic grill in the bottom and earpiece in the top and on the back there's this uh, 13 megapixel camera with the led flash on the right you get to see the buttons uh, for the power or lock and the volume rockers and on the left this big slit for the different types of uh, slots for the two sim cards and uh, one for the micro sd card so overall with the de design stc hasn't again uh, disappointed me and it is still a polycarbonate design but uh, there's nothing bad about it except for this issue that the device has and the glossy back which retains all the smudges and finger marks whenever you touch the back panel it directly takes up all the marks and the smudges so those are retained there itself and it does look bad for the price you're paying nothing else is bad about the design except for this one now coming to the display between the two um, grills for the speaker and the earpiece uh, there's this 5.5 inch 720p display and uh, it's not a 1080p display but that's that's no surprise because it's not a flagship smartphone and HTC knows how to play well with the displays and uh, it does have a brilliant display with good color reproduction, natural color output and also uh, there's a good saturation as well. The sunlight readability is pretty great. It doesn't uh, let you know that it's uh, very light or low because you can still read the content pretty well under the sunlight. So the display is uh, good for the price you're paying again and you can uh, even enjoy the games and videos because of the good color reproduction of the HTC Desire A20's uh, 720p display. So the next uh, major important factor is the performance of the smartphone. First of all talking about the specs, this one comes with a 64-bit uh, processor, the Snapdragon 615 which is an octa chipset and this is one of the important factors to consider because Android Lollipop update is going to come into this though HTC hasn't confirmed but still we are sure that the A20 will have the Android Lollipop update and uh, uh, this having a 64-bit chipset the performance just gets better with this. So for as far as the performance is concerned in this device, opening an app, multitasking, uh, playing high-end games or opening high-end uh, applications and switching between them, everything is snappy and you never feel uh, even a bit of lag and the RAM management is done very well because uh, after a fresh reboot I got about uh, 1.3 GB of RAM that's available and that is a pretty good uh, point to be noted because uh, that compared to some Samsung's uh, mid-range devices or something that would be uh, even much better because 2 GB out of 2 GB RAM around uh, uh, 980 or 950 MB is what you get to see in uh, those smartphones but 1.3 GB was pretty neat here. So HTC has done again a very good job with the performance with the specifications matched with the interface and the interface in this the HTC Sense UI is as always very much optimized for a very good user experience as well as uh, it doesn't never frets up with any kind of high-end usage you do it. Uh, talking about the battery life of the HTC Desire 820 it's a 2600 mAh battery so you expect this to at least give you a full day's usage but uh, uh, it's a bit of disappointing uh, factor here because it uh, didn't last more than 12 to 15 hours for me 
although that's the day when you actually start using it and uh, end it by the end of the day but still sometimes when using the 3g connectivity and having the screen on for a longer time the battery seems to have uh, given up uh, just between 10 to 12 hours because the screen is where the major of the battery was used and uh, this bright display when it was set on uh, on the maximum brightness under sunlight it was giving up even faster so battery is not the best here but still if you are using with the optimum conditions and this does have the battery saver uh, options so if you are using that uh, with some limited performance it does give you a full day's usage so either way you can uh, try to optimize it and uh, use it for the entire day or uh, with some compromises if you want a full performance from the smartphone you can't expect this to go for the entire day Talking about the UI and the software part, this runs the Android 4.4.4 KitKat which was the latest till now before the Android Lollipop was announced but still uh, Lollipop update is expected to this and the Sense UI 6.0 is the most interesting part. HTC is one of those brands which always has tried to, uh, tried to given a good user experience with the, the Sense UI but still there hasn't been any big issues with the performance because if you compare this with the touchwiz ui of the samsung smartphones i have always been uh, pretty much uh, disappointed with the samsung's interfaces because over time with a few months of usage you see the device not responding even to uh, the simple applications like phone where it takes like a few seconds to open the application but htc has always done a great job in that so this one comes with the sense 6.0 ui with the latest blink feed and all the uh, applications that you need to get around with and if you are already using uh, an HTC device this would be the easiest to use but still if you are some someone who is uh, shifting to HTC for the first time you won't be confused at all because this is one of the easiest UI to use around and it has got a proper app drawer it has got all the home screens to play around with there's a quick settings section and the notifications panel and the settings area has been well optimized and placed under various categories so that is all good with the HTC's uh, software aspect and there are a few applications such as uh, car mode and uh, auto forward and there are uh, HTC dot view HTC backup and uh, even the stocks application is uh, pre-installed, Polaris Office is there and power to give and uh, HTC Zoo application for the camera is also pre-installed. So there are a few apps uh, which come pre-installed for the user to already start using it and uh, who ha doesn't have to worry about the applications that they have to download after a, a new purchase. With the camera on the desire, you are looking at a 13 MP sensor with LED flash and the camera interface hasn't changed much from the previous HTC devices which is simple and cleaner interface. You can control the ISO, white balance, exposure and all the usual stuff you might expect. There are a couple of uh, new modes that, uh, uh, that let you take picture in a split way and uh, uh, from the front and back cameras at well, as well at the same time as well as a photo booth mode which lets you take several photos and compile them together just like the real photo booth uh, photos with a 13 mp sensor you can take pretty good photos in natural sufficient light conditions but more often the exposure and white balance will usually be a way of causing a lot of uh, details to be lost and that is uh, mostly in the low light conditions sdr however does eliminate this issue to some extent in both the bright light and low light conditions so it doesn't get much better in low light resulting in a loss of lot of noise it is virtually impossible to take usual photos in dim light conditions. The front facing camera is another good thing. It's worth noticing that it has got an 8 megapixel module. So if you are into selfies, you can take a lot of advantage from the photo booth application again. And the camera is pretty brilliant here. So talking about the important thing, that's the cons or the disadvantages with the smartphone. There are three things that I'd like to mention here. The first one is the design aspect where these smudges or the fingerprints on the back are retained and that doesn't look good. The second one is about the heating issue. This one can be compared with the Sony's Xperia series for the heating issues that it gets because the HTC Desire A20 while playing games had moved to around 47 degrees and that is not at all good when you are playing high-end games and doing some stuff and you, you see the phone heating up to that extent. That was the second uh, issue with this and the third one not that important or uh, th not that bad because the battery life is not the best here. Still you can go through the entire day if you are using with the optimum performance but still it isn't the best of the batteries you see out there with this price range. So coming to the final verdict whether this phone is uh, worth the price of Rs 22,000 or around that in various stores. This HD Desire A20 is very well worth the price because there is no perfect competitor to this 
when you talk about the camera uh, the camera combination here that's 30 megapixel plus 8 megapixel and the os with the perfect htc sense uh, ui 6.0 that is again uh, a brilliant aspect to check and uh, the only few issues that i talked about was the design and the heating up issues and if you're okay with that this is one of the perfect uh, choices for you for this price range so this doesn't have real good competitors except for the GNE Life E7 if you talk about but again that has that does have a, a previous version of Android OS and that isn't uh, really exciting for many people because there's a, there are app compatibilities that you can see in there so this one is a very much worth the price smartphone from HTC the Desire 820 so this was the review of the 820 I hope you like this video and uh, do give a thumbs up on our channel and uh, do subscribe to our channel phone data for more videos Thank you.